When the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filed its multi-billion dollar lawsuit against the blockchain technology company Ripple and two executives in December, the timing was doubly peculiar. The complaint alleged that Ripple's sales of the cryptocurrency XRP from 2013 to the present were illegal, unregistered security offerings rather than the distribution of a digital token to build a payments network. The SEC waiting seven years to make this allegation with billions of XRP tokens now coursing through the secondary crypto markets was strange enough. But the case was also filed in the final hours of outgoing SEC Chairman Jay Clayton and then dumped on an evenly split commission heading towards a new administration. By watching the volley of filings heat up the case docket, it has become clear that the SEC's decision to sue Ripple was misguided. And in recent days, a series of developments are starting to make it look like a disastrous mistake that the incoming chairman, Gary Gensler, will have to sort out. The SEC probably didn't expect the storm that Clayton's final act has kicked up, and it has exposed the inherent weakness in the decision to sue. It began on January 1, when a group of XRP holders led by Rhode Island attorney John E. Deaton struck back at the agency. Deaton, a personal injury lawyer with class action experience, filed a petition in the U.S. District Court in his home state to force the SEC to exclude his XRP holdings from being defined as a security. He says he didn't buy XRP as an investment contract and never considered it a security, and the SEC's action against Ripple unfairly harmed him when it sent its value plunging and forced crypto exchanges to start delisting the token. After filing his action, Deaton says he was inundated with requests from thousands of fellow XRP retail holders wanting to join his case. Last Friday, the SEC's response to Deaton landed in Rhode Island. For those watching the Ripple case in New York, it carried an astonishing argument, the SEC asked to dismiss Deaton's petition because no determination has yet been made on whether XRP is a security. Put two and two together, and the SEC is saying that Ripple and its two top executives had to have reasonable knowledge of something seven years ago that the agency itself wasn't sure about last Friday. One wonders which part of the 1933 Securities Act the SEC will eventually use to argue that Ripple is obliged to have psychic powers to operate lawfully in the United States. Co-defendants Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, top Ripple executives, had sent letters to the New York judge on March 3, anticipating their own motions to dismiss the lawsuit with arguments around fair notice and due process. Two days later, the SEC's response to Deaton only made their arguments even more obvious.